week's voice party is brought to you by IOPvideo.com. We're all stuck inside and content is king right now. So if you want to create some content, have some video shot, advertise your small business, start a podcast, whatever, check out IOPvideo.com. We do it all and we will do it all for you. IOPvideo.com. We make things look pretty. Hey, it's going good. How are you guys? We are living. How's it going, man? Good to hear. <laughs> Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I've Thank been you for coming on. Sure man. thing, man. Yeah. Is this a? Is there another JD? I don't know how this thing works. There's, there's, yeah. There are two JDs. We have JD Arandia and we have JD Charisma. Oh, cool. For sure. What's up, JD? <laughs> nice to meet you, JD. JD's got a JD's got a joint force. Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, no, I've actually I've been wanting to have you on the show for a while, and since we're all cooped up inside and doing guests over the phone, I figured, hey, now's the perfect time. There we go, for sure. I'm I'm so glad you uh, reached out, man. I, I've never done like an interview this long, so this is like my first time doing yeah. it for this long. Yeah, we try. Yeah, no, we try and keep it real casual, just have it more like a conversation. Sure. Uh, with which I'm super excited about because. Whenever you and me are hanging out, it's usually on set, so we're working and we're focused on that. So right. we never really get a chance to just chat. Sure, yeah. Well, let's chat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I know I have a lot of friendships like that, but working on something you love, you kind of get to know each other better than than you would in a conversation. Mm. I don't know. I, I, that's just how like I on feel. a set. So you guys know each other? Yeah, you guys know each other from from working on set together. Uh, yeah. I mean. Pretty much. <laughs> Do you want to take this one? Yeah, no, we've we've worked on a couple projects together, um, and he's probably one of the coolest dudes I've met on set uh -oh. in a while. So, like, I try. Yeah. I've been looking for excuses to do stuff with him, and they always <laughs> fall through at the last minute. So, has arrived yet? Oh yeah, but so, JD. Uh, I, 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 so JD grew grew quick. Just uh, so you're an actor or you're a filmmaker. What what do you do exactly, brother? Yeah, so uh, I'm an actor, recording artist, entertainer. Um, I'm diving into some new stuff now. Actually, I just started a Twitch channel, and uh, right. I just hit right. affiliate in a week. And um, I am also a filmmaker. What does that mean exactly? Uh, so basically, there are Twitch partners, and a step below that is Twitch affiliate. So. People, oh, okay. uh, it's kind of like a mini partnership. Uh, okay. And you can start making money on Twitch and have people subscribe to you. So I'm just starting this new Twitch channel out, and uh, it's super exciting, like playing games and just hanging out with people on Twitch. That's really cool. Creating content for Twitch. Uh, and I'm also starting my YouTube channel. And uh, nice. yes, I'm a filmmaker. I'm producing a really cool film. I don't know if we should talk about it now or no, get we into it later. Oh no, yeah, we, whenever, whenever you want. Well, <laughs> my uh, my film, I'm working on an original uh, short film. It's like half an hour. We're trying to break it down to 20 minutes right now, but it's an original character. It takes place in medieval times. It's like this fantasy, medieval comedy adventure, and it mixes like hip hop music and a lot of modern like. Uh, stuff in it too so i'm like really excited for that one yeah oh nice okay it, 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 that, yeah, that's your original like you wrote it yeah all. i came up with the character really and i'm uh working with my director uma uh and we are writing it together um and we're also branching off into other things i'll, I'll keep that a little has to be a little on the down yeah, low, no, but yeah. we're doing other yeah, things. It's not just like a short film. It's going to branch off into more stuff. So we're really excited. So it's like a series maybe or, or like a little universe of yeah, your own Yeah, that's the goal, man. That's the goal to create your nice. own universe. Yeah. yeah. That's 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 awesome to see, man. And you know what? I think I, I, I was going to ask you because you mentioned something that just kind of caught my attention right now. You said you just became an affiliate. Do you think – like right now that everybody's at home, like did that help you get more followers or more? Yeah, uh, um, no, for sure, for sure. That's why I really wanted to take advantage of this exactly, year right now. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. I'll be real, man. The first like two weeks of like the quarantine, I was lazy. <laughs> like I was getting up at like nine, and I wasn't working. I like, I worked out maybe once or twice a week. Um, yeah, but 
Just to know if you're, so you don't feel guilty by overeating. Yeah, huh? I guess, man. Like, I was just lazy, bro. But then after that first two weeks, I was like, no, nah, man, I need to get back to it and get ready for when things pop off again. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then I figured out, like, why don't I try something new? Because I was looking into Twitch and I was looking into creating content and how would I put myself out there while everyone is, like, in front of a screen pretty much all day? Well, some people, not, not everyone, right. but... A lot of people are on their computers or their phones. And I'm like, can I put my content out? So I did a series of throwback videos. People enjoyed that on my YouTube channel. And then um, I decided to start my Twitch channel. And I'm glad I did because I hit affiliate in a week, which is pretty wow. hard to do, I assume. I don't know. Yeah. But there's so many people on the internet right now. So just putting your content out right now, like it's bound to get somebody to see it. So, yeah, that was, right. that was one thing we were talking about is just like content is king right now because everyone's stuck at home and Hollywood is shut down. Yeah. You know, all the all the TV shows are cutting their season short. Right. It's the whole pandemic going on. So people are just thirsty yeah. for something to consume. That's crazy, too. I don't know how like sets are going to like do you wonder that like how are sets going to be after this point? Yeah, it's <laughs> You know, because like a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah, because that's my thing. Is like, you know, I watch all the the CW superhero shows. Oh, me too. And like, Fla and like Flash, yeah. their season finale is like next week because oh, they were just like, well, I guess we're done. Okay. So, like, they had more episodes to film, but they couldn't. So oh God, yeah. next week is the finale, and then I guess they'll just finish whenever. <laughs> but who knows? Oh, that's no one crazy. knows what's going on right now. Yeah. I think this is going to be a huge push for like YouTubers. Sure. And, you know, I mean, it already is showing right. that it is a big uh, opportunity for uh, just getting more eyes on, on I call it local content, mm -hmm. you know, people who are doing uh, stuff if, like, like you, for example, like, yeah, when Phil told mm -hmm. me he wanted to bring you on, he sent us that video you, you, uh, you created of uh, the, oh, yeah. my date with Wonder yeah. Woman. <laughs> How long ago? Did that was you years that? ago. That was like 2017. Um, yeah, I, I, I was in my acting studio. Uh, I go to the Hive in San Jose. But uh, my coach from there, he uh, he kind of gave me the idea. He was like, yo, man, there's this video. This What's the Hive? Oh, sorry, the Hive. Sorry, sorry, yeah, the, the hive? hive is this cool storytelling studio for actors, directors, writers. Um, and they break down like all the different acting theories and story structures. Uh, and it, it oh, taught wow, me okay. so much about acting, too, because like, you know, in the Bay Area, we're primarily taught Meisner. If all the actors out there kind of know that Meisner is like the main one out here. But this was the first like storytelling studio that, you know, it, it took a holistic approach and it taught me about Adler, uh, Strasburg, practical aesthetics. And it taught me about all the different tools of acting more than just Meisner. And no knock to Meisner because Meisner is cool. But like learning about the other ones like was super helpful and knowing like okay Strasburg a lot of Strasburg actors are in New York a lot of Adler actors are in LA and it all makes sense and learning like about the story structures of inciting incidents midpoints I don't mean to bore y'all about all this like mm -hmm. acting stuff no you know what I, I'm curious because I've never heard these terms I do a little bit of acting okay. I feel like the laziest lamest actor in the world right <laughs> now nah, man we all start somewhere or are we all doing well, so this is a school in San Jose uh it's 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 kind of a school. It's not really a school. It's like uh, it's it's really called a storytelling studio. So like, yeah, we there are classes, but what it's set up to be like, like is a society of art. Of what was that? Like a society of acting? yeah, kind of. So we all meet like three times a week, and then we go through like scenes or whatever we're working on for the week. We all critique each other, and then the founder of the hive, uh, his name is VJ. Uh, he runs the hive, so he kind of like teaches. He has classes that you could take. You don't have to take, but the primary thing is we're all uh, showing our material or working on like stuff that we're working on, and we all like help each other out. So it's a it's a really cool community. Everybody there is like all love, and the the best thing about it is we're all honest. Like you know, if, if it's not as good as we you know hoped it to be, people will tell you at the hive like they're. They're ruthless, but it's coming from a loving place, so it's not like malicious. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's all like I, I get it. it's like an open mic. Yeah, 
It's like a comedy open mic. Yeah. <laughs> it's malicious. <laughs> and it makes sense. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because if somebody's just like, oh, you did great, you did great. Well, you don't really learn Ex- from that. That doesn't really help you. Exactly. You know? Yeah. No, it was tough, man. I remember my first year there. <laughs> man, I was like crying every day. I was like, oh, I don't get it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, it's hot. Because I've never heard these terms you just mentioned. Yeah. Like, is that... So is that like a different styles of uh, of, of uh, you know? Yeah. I'm sure I've, I've seen it in film, but I don't know the sure. difference. You know what um, I'm saying? I mean, so basics are, and there's so many, there's so much. I can't like teach it like all right now in five minutes right. or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, there are different styles of acting. Um, whereas like Meisner is like usually about reacting, reacting to your scene partner. How do you feel? And then however you feel, that's how you'll say the next line, right? And a lot of Bay Area actors, like, will act with that style in mind. Adler breaks down, like, scripts, and it's it's a story. And there's a theme in every single movie that is not on, like, the text of the script. There's, like, it's, it's called subtext, right? So okay. you have to really, like, dig deep to know what this movie is actually saying without it like you know literally saying it there's a message right, right? right and knowing that theme will affect the whole story and affect how you as a actor plays your character you know what i mean so that's that's actually my favorite technique right now is adler um it took a long time for okay. me to to really that reminds me of something like it's more like something kubrick did with his films right uh is that kind of what you're talking i'm not about? familiar so <laughs> I couldn't answer okay. you, but uh, I can <laughs> okay. maybe, probably. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then Strasbourg is about like the sense memories. Um, when you're when you're mad, you think about like uh, a memory when you're mad, and you're like, okay, in that oh, memory, yeah. what was I smelling? What was I seeing? What was I feeling? What was I, you know, what was the air like? And remembering all that. You think about those things and it will get you back to that place and you use that for your scene. And then practical aesthetics is, uh, uh, pra- sorry, practical aesthetics is about goals. It's like, what's your goal in this scene? And it's about you trying to get that goal. That's it. Nothing else. Not a, it's wow. not about the emotion. All that stuff mm-hmm. comes natural, but you just focus on your goal. So that's the basics of all the different like story structures that they go over at the Hive. But it's really cool yeah. knowing this. Cause then you could, yeah, yeah. You definitely. I was gonna say, even even from like a director's point of view, yeah. it's super important to like mm. know all these things. Mm-hmm. If you're working with your actors, yeah. you know, an inexperienced director might say something like, "Be angry," but <laughs> seven different things right. to you know, yeah. different people. Yeah. Knowing all these different techniques, you can kind of like figure out how to communicate better with your actor to get the performance you yeah. want, to get the reaction you mm-hmm. want, to get the nuance you want. So. Like, I always recommend, like, even if you're not planning on being an actor, if you're just going to be, like, a director, yeah. take some acting classes and stuff because it'll help you get in that frame of mind and help you communicate yeah. better with your actor because you can speak the same language they right. speak. Right. So you get that coaching jargon down. Yeah, exactly. And actors are different, too, you know, because, like, some actors are just Adler actors, right? And they don't they do not do yeah. Strasbourg or they don't do Meisner. And you have to know how to talk mm-hmm. to them based on what their process is like. And I think that's really cool about the hive is that like it's not just for actors, it's for directors and writers and just storytellers, period. That's why it's such a great community. You know what I mean? It's not built just for actors. And you learn so much from just so all sides. Knows, this episode is sponsored by the hive. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know what, that's awesome, man. I, I've been I've been curious to to you know, because ever since I did my first little gig, yeah. I I because I, I did stand up comedy. That's how I got into okay. even whatever roles I got into. Cool. And, I, and that's I, that that's awesome, man. I I I never heard it broken down the way you just did right now. For sure. And, uh, it's it's it, it's interesting. It's interesting for me to because um, are you did you get into this more as to being a director or you really are you what are you oh. what are you more and, and yeah. yeah no I'm definitely like actor definitely actor uh, i've been that day one and i am that today and i will be tomorrow <laughs> well, oh yeah no yeah that's that's because yeah. i know that's like that's what, what i asked that just because of what what uh phil just said you know some guys sure think that, like they'll go and get, yeah they'll go and get their uh yeah acting class on just so they can uh 
eventually coach other actors. So, but you do, you have done uh, directing. Uh, I mean, I've directed like music videos, um, okay. stuff that I've self-produced. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call me a director. Like, don't come and hire me as a director. <laughs> but like, I know the responsibilities, and I work hand in hand with my close friend. Her name is Uma. She mm-hmm. is one heck of a director, and okay. I am producing again my film with her. Uh, I don't even know if I said the name of it. I probably should no, right now. I don't know. Okay. Should I? It's, it's up to you. It's top it's, secret. <laughs> top secret. Top secret, man. Just like you're dropping Maybe I'll drop it. Screw it. Screw it. I feel good tonight. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the project is called Charisma Gold. Oh, yeah. okay. Ooh, okay. And it's it's going to be epic. Sounds sexy. Yeah. No, he is. He is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> are, is that, are you starring I, it? I am. I am starring in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah that, you know, that's. I think that's every, I don't know, maybe maybe you could correct me. That's like every actor's dream, right? To, to write something that you can star in. Man, to to be honest, man, my dream is to never write again. <laughs> really? No, but like I no, because I, I I like writing. I like writing, but my passion is the acting. You know, it's the that's okay. that's what I yeah. love. You know, I just I wrote okay. this because I had to. I have nobody else who can write for me, so I had to learn how to write a script. And I've written scripts before, like I've written for like shows before. Um, so this was like cool um, doing. But yeah, my, my passion is the acting. But I love, okay. I love stories, man. I'm a storyteller, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What, quick question, then. One, I I wanted to pick your brain a little bit sure. on on since we're talking a lot about acting. Okay. What's what's one of your influences as far as acting wise, mm. and what's one of your favorite movies? Ooh. You know, whenever I have to answer the favorite movie, man, I can't come up. So I'm just gonna like give you what's in my probably top ten. I usually ask top top three or top five. Yeah, I'll give you like a couple of them. Top. And and they're not yeah. classics, you know. I should mention a classic just so like they know that I don't just like stupid movies. <laughs> yeah. But no, man. Like I like. Okay, here here hear me out. Okay, I like uh, Rush Hour is one of like my favorite oh, yeah. buddy cop movies. Okay. Um. Yeah. You know, uh, Shawshank Redemption is just a classical, like, that's a great film. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, four out of four yeah. in terms of quality of film, like smartness and just the twists and turns in that movie. Um, right. And the filmmaking, everything about it was great. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. let's see, Tropic Thunder. I really like that movie. Nice. Um, that- <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Robert man. Downey Jr. Man, and you talk about influence. He is yeah. in my top two actors. So my first, wow, I don't know. I don't have a particular um, order. You don't have an order. I don't have an order, yeah. but like my first actor that I've ever like looked up to was Will Smith. It's my first one. Oh yeah. You know oh. he was. I saw him in Fresh Prince, and then I followed his career career ever since. And you know he's that. You blockbuster you know and then he became a great actor you know what i mean so yeah. i love will smith uh robert downey jr is definitely there in terms of like skill in terms of talent in terms of that like he is a phenomenal actor and i think people don't even give him enough credit for how good he really is because like, people that's yeah. true you know people see him as iron man you know what i mean like okay yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is, there's like two different eras for Robert Downey Jr. He had his whole run in the '90s, and then you know he kind of he got into you know he did his he did his thing, and then he kind of had his whole little career renaissance with the yeah. Marvel movies. And while that turned his career around, people tend to forget about the right. earlier stuff right. that he did. Right. You know, like my my like my favorite Robert Downey Jr. movie is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Val Kilmer. Oh my yeah. god, that's a movie yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh my god. No, he, he, man, I, I just can't even, his talent is so good. He's so diverse, too, in the variety of roles he's played. Like, people don't even give him that credit. They think, like, oh, he's just Iron Man. He's just being himself. And even if you look at Iron Man, you know what I mean? Like, being yourself, yeah. quote, unquote, <laughs> that's hard in itself to be yourself right. on screen. People don't know how hard that is. And to keep people's that, yeah. attention for, like, 10 years Wanting to watch you as the same character for mm-hmm. ten years, like not a lot the of the same character, the same character, and and he, 
he doesn't bore you in any one of the films. Yes. That's another thing I, I realized about. Yeah. yeah. No, and those those two guys you mentioned, those two actors, yeah. literally could do anything. They could be funny, goofy, yeah. yeah. And they, you know, Pursuit of Happiness is one of my favorite movies Love from it. Will yeah. Smith. Yeah. And it, it's, um, I mean, seeing. I remember the first movie I ever saw of Will Smith was uh, Independence Day. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, those, those like those those kind of movies. That's funny. Yeah. It, it 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 made yeah those kind of movies just make make it made acting seem fun yes so like you know because that's that's, that's yes. the difference between when I watch a good movie and then there's some movies that man it, it looks like fun yeah being on set bro. for this film. oh my <laughs> god you it's know like, and I miss that too a lot of films don't really make you feel that anymore and that's why I want to do this mine too you know charisma gold I want that to have, like that old school feeling of like fun like Indiana Jones. Like fun, yeah. you know what I mean? Like adventure and just, it doesn't have to be so dark and, and you know, like broody. That's and, what I love about, yeah. That's what I love about horror films. Yeah. Like the the set just looks fun, you know? Yeah, like, I feel it. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's one of the things that we, we always mention because, you know, Phil does this Frosted Mini Fears thing and, and uh, you know, we kind of got involved with each other yeah. on a horror thing. Um For sure. I, you know, I, but it's funny that you mentioned Rush Hour, man. So you like comedy. You're oh, I love, bro, bro. Do you understand the that words funny? that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I knew oh, you shit. was lying, Lee. I knew you was lying. <laughs> oh, damn. That's pretty. <laughs> spot on, right? I ask you. Spot on, dude. Uh, thank you, I, I was going to ask you, man. Uh, did you ever, because I know a lot of actors tried it first when they were getting uh, for stage. Do you ever do stand-up? Ooh. Dude, so many people have told me that I could do stand up. But yeah. I know like there's so much like, you know, uh I don't even, like there's a process I don't even know what to say. There's like a what do you call it? There's like a formula to comedy. It's like a lot different to perform like stand up comedy than it is to just be funny in real life. Cuz I right. I feel like I'm funny in real life. Yeah, I timing yeah, no, I I get that. I've had people be like, "Oh, you're so funny. Yeah. You should do stand up." And I always tell them, "Like, well, I'm more I'm more sitcom funny. Right. I'm not really stand up. Right. Yeah, it is. You know, it I'm is funny because of what's that. going on. I feel that. I feel like I could if I really put my attention to it and understand the structure of comedy. Maybe I could do like a five minute set, but I right. don't think That's, I'd be able to yeah. do like an hour special. Like, it's not. It's just I'm not a stand up <laughs> comedian at heart. Yeah. Right. If I fully committed, then maybe. But like my commitment right now is to be an actor. Right. You know? No. Yeah. There yeah. There's you know, there's a lot of guys that, so, that I know, you know that that are funny and they do acting. Yeah. Like one yeah. one of our friends that we work with, and I yeah. and I see that in some guy just by talking to him, like this, this motherfucker could do stand up. You know, like yeah, he could do stand up. So like yeah. I, you know, just by talking to you, like you, you seem like you you probably. I, I always encourage everyone who. Especially if you've heard, if you hear people tell you you should try it, and and I know them, and like I, I yeah. know that, like you know, like Phil for example, yeah. like it's a funny guy. Yeah. I always encourage everyone to try it just just to see what it's like because it is different. I mean, yeah, I, you know, I've never act, I've never done well only in like did acting in in stage, um, okay. and before that I did music. So I kind of when I went into stand up, I mean, don't get me wrong, I had stage stage fright. I think that's the number one thing <laughs> is mm. stage fright. In stand-up, that's like the biggest killer. Gaspar will tell you because he, he, we started together almost okay. uh, close to the same time. And um, when you when you start off on a joke and the first joke doesn't hit, it's really hard to continue on the next one. Sure. And, I've, uh, seen, <laughs> I've seen. I've been to like a couple of like small like comedy clubs and yeah. events. Yeah, no. Because yeah. that's the thing is when you're, when you're acting, you know, you can yeah, try nice. stuff. Uh, let nice. me do a different take. Let me try a different delivery. You know, and then you just have faith that the director and the editor is going to make it work in the edit and make you funny. Yeah. And you on stage, if something doesn't, right? Like, oh, yeah, I'm all right then. Yeah, oh. right. No, I, I, quick uh, question about about that also is for you. Like, what what was your first project you did? Like, what made you? Were you always a kid, like doing characters <laughs> in your room? Get into acting? No, nah, man, I was shy, bro. I, I was shy. Tell. I didn't talk to Ooh. nobody. Yeah, you can't tell, man. My mom, like, so man, what was that? Is that I can't? Uh, I, was, I was gonna say because, like, I know, <laughs> yeah, I can't picture you being shy because on all the sets we've been on, you've been right. like the life of the party. You've been the one with the most. <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. I know. 
No, so I was shy as a kid, and then my mom put me in theater to break out of that shyness. And I hated theater at first, you know, because, like, at the time, girls had cooties, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I thought about that. <laughs> And then, they still uh, do, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just don't mind as adults. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, my first gig, I was like a mouse in Cinderella. And, and oh, wow. talking yeah. about like stage fright, my first show that I've ever done, I was that mouse and I had a mask over my face. And I forget my line and I didn't know what to say. So I'm looking at everybody. I'm looking at the crowd and I just ran off stage. That was my first. Wow, yeah, man. that was my no first way. performance ever. And that, that how old were you again? I was in like uh, second grade. So how old is that? Man, that's like that's yeah, yeah, something like seven, seven I think. Wait, are you, yeah, yeah, are se you, seven years old. Yeah, that's about are right. You, are you uh, are you guys the same age? You and Phil, or uh, do you guys meet at not not in high school, right? Because most of the time it's someone of your high school. No, we we on met set. on yeah no we, me and him we met oh, on okay. set. Um, ironically, all the stuff we worked on together has never <laughs> come out. It's all ended up in yeah. How do you guys it's feel Eric, about that, right? man? Because it is it is hidden in a vault. It's it's like the Prince Vault. It it ain't coming out. It ain't coming out. Like so, so well, what, what's crazy charisma is I don't know. Like I've you know I was working behind the scenes with. Uh, you know, on both of those projects. So I, I can tell firsthand, like, war stories, dealing mm -hmm. with all the behind-the-scenes drama, mm -hmm. trying to get all that stuff out. Uh, oh, <sighs> Lord. Yeah, the joys of, <laughs> Don't get me started. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the thing is, yeah. How does that feel when something you yeah, do no, doesn't... I mean, it's got to suck, man. Like, if I work... I'm pro I, I, I hate, I hate, I hate like spending time and money and energy into something and then never seeing the light, light of day. So I'll fight, I'll fight yeah. to get stuff released. That's, that's, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I, I'd be, cause like you said, it, it, it takes yeah. a lot of work to, you know, to yeah. prepare so, yeah. lines so, and all sure. that. And, and, yeah. well, so, all right, well, let me share this story. Uh, charisma. I don't know if you ever uh, heard the behind the scenes story, but. I'm, I'm going to tell a little story just about how stressful okay. working behind the scenes is. Uh, me and Joaquin were working um, with with uh, this guy. I don't want to blast nobody, so uh, we'll just call him Eric okay. for the time being. <laughs> but we were working with this dude, and we were supposed to be producing a bunch of video content for him. And so we kind of had free reign to do whatever we wanted. And I wanted to make a short film about oh. J.D. Charisma. You see, it's the coolest person on set. And so I came up with this idea for a short and I pitched it to him and the dude loved it. And he was like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to film it this weekend and we're going to have a table read for the next thing, the following weekend. And we can show the short film at the thing and just got us all very rah, rah, gung ho about everything. Right. And so I started like casting it. I started scheduling it. I sent out scripts. I sent out call sheets. I'm planning the shoot. And then as we get closer and closer to the shoot date, there's still no money. There's still no locations. And then he's sending me all these things that he wants to change. And it's starting to get to a point where it's like two weeks before filming. And he's like, oh, they got to wear their superhero suits. They can't be in the thing if they're not wearing their superhero suits. And I'm like, do, do they have their suits? Like, well, we're still designing them, but they're going to look great. And I'm like, so we're supposed to film in two weeks. You're insisting they wear these suits that we don't have. And we still don't have funding or locations. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll write the yeah. suits into the script. <laughs> And it got to a point where it was like, it was like a week before we're supposed to film. And he's like, ah, we couldn't get no money. We're going to have to put it on hold. And I'm like, you, you probably should have got the money before you had me mm -hmm. lock in a day. But what do I know? Yeah. So then I got to break the news to everybody and be like, well, the money fell mm -hmm. through. Yeah, man. Like, I, I got to say, right in that it, script, because if I recall correctly, you you wrote, you you had written the, the overall premise. And I, I did like the dialogue, right? And now that that broke down. Yeah, I did the treatment, and then yeah. I had you flush it out. Yeah, I did the treatment, mm -hmm. and then I had you flush it out. Because in all the things with JD, you know, he's like, you know, he's like flirty, flirtatious, and he's trying to be a ladies' man. Mm -hmm. He gets rejected left and right. So I wrote a short film. <laughs> he finally gets the girl, and I wrote the scene where he's on a date with this beautiful woman who's just all into him and laughing at all his jokes. Too good to be true. JD Charisma's on cloud nine. We never got to make it happen. Sure. I mean, you know, that's the business, man. And sometimes it's hard. So it is, it is what it is. 
Hey, JD, yeah. so yeah, I so mean, you, we could still make that movie. Yeah, <laughs> we probably we just change a couple things to avoid, you know, intellectual problems. Of course, maybe. Yeah, but, we'll, we'll we'll talk after stream. I mean, uh, after. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not throw anyone under the fucking bus now. <laughs> hey, so I have a question. I was watching some of your videos on on YouTube, and uh, I saw. Uh, some of the some of the musical performances. So you say you're primarily an actor. Yeah. So where m- most of your experience is what like theater or or actually in front of a camera? Okay, so I did uh, as I was saying before, I did theater for the early part of my career, but it was like school theater, you know. Or there was some pretty good productions though that came out of that. I was Pinocchio. I was Aladdin. Um, nice. Yeah, it's funny about Pinocchio though is that the year after I did the Mouse project, the, the Cinderella. Uh, I did Pinocchio and at first like basketball was my first passion ever in life so I wanted to be in the NBA that was like my dream I just want to be in the NBA (laughs) and then uh, I they my parents forced me to do Pinocchio and I was like a week late in production so they're like okay we're a week late we're not supposed to take him but we'll take him fine it's okay I show up I don't even remember what happened next but I remember the first night of uh, Pinocchio I was Pinocchio, even though I was a week late. Oh, wow. So they, they recasted Pinocchio <laughs> for me. And I didn't even know this. Like, and I, I realize now because there was another guy who's there and he was like confused on what was going on when they made me Pinocchio. Looking back at it, I realized they recasted it for me. I feel really bad about it. But anyways, <laughs> um, no, I did theater for the early part. And then I got my first series regular role on um the filipino version of iCarly um and it was oh, a okay. dope on, on. show bro it was a dope script the dope production and and <laughs> this goes back into the whole producing thing man like the production um company who came up with the script and story they were dope i loved the story i was like the next fresh prince that was my my character really who was this for, was this for tfc uh yeah i don't really want to put names out there though okay so Oh, sorry. sorry but it's all that. good. Sorry. I mean, yeah. So it was on TFC. It was on uh, CW forty four <laughs> cable twelve. It's all good. Don't worry about okay. it. I'm not gonna say like who. I'm not gonna say like the show's name. We we could we could we could edit that. It's out. fine. Whatever. Whatever you guys want to do. Um. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I just I'm just curious because I I used to work for a cable company. Okay. And I think what, what year was this? This was like 2009, 2010, around there. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, way back. That's awesome, man. I, I, so this was broadcast in the Philippines? No, no. So it was broadcast, yeah, Philippines, but also in the Bay Area, uh, 44 Cable 12, okay. CW. Oh, um, uh, okay. And okay. so, yeah, it, it was a good show. But here's the thing. Before we shot, they fired the production company, which means we couldn't use the script. And then the story became, instead of a dope story where I was like the next Fresh Prince, it became like everyone's friends and there's no problems. Mm. And it was just a bad story. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be on TV. I'm getting paid, so I'll do the job. You know, get the job done, right? Where were you guys filming? Then? Where? Yeah, where was there it was filmed? like this warehouse, and they did. Uh, they built the set. Um, it was in, I believe, San Jose. But there was there was a warehouse oh, okay, in San Jose. Okay, and then, okay. uh, they had the whole set built. It was pretty good too, man. Like if we had kept the original production team, I felt like it would have been a really cool show. But uh yeah, anyways, ish happens, right? But yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing with production. Yeah. Stuff happens, money falls through, yeah. contracts fall yeah. through. But eventually, all man, after a lot of hard work, man, if you keep grinding, I feel like it'll all pay off. Hard work always pays off. So. Something oh, yeah. but yeah, so I, I did the series regular role and then ever since then I just did T V and film and then eventually just film. And and I stuck with film because film was like my number one. But I did music also back and forth, talking about the whole music thing. And I recorded my first album at fourteen. I would perform in like Hollywood, Beverly Hills, uh, Las Vegas. Uh, wow. You're jack of all trades as far as entertainment. Yeah, huh? man, I try, man, I try. How did you? What? How? What? How did you get Go the? Ahead, uh, how did you get the skill for for music? Because I mean, like. Uh, Will Smith actually inspired my musical career. 
Um, okay. Because he was a rapper too, right? So yeah. Um, I would yeah. rap, you know, with the Fresh Prince theme song, and then like I would start writing raps because I love Fresh Prince so much. So I started writing my own raps. Um, and then I wrote my mom. I think this was my first like song I've ever written. It was called Dear Mama. Speaking of Mother's Day, guys. Uh, yeah, happy Mother's Day. I wrote Day. that for her mm-hmm. on her birthday, and then uh, my neighbors. So my friend, who was my neighbor. And went to the same school as me. His name is Isaac. His mom heard me rapping the song. And so she called my mom up. And she was like, there's something that you need to hear. And then I performed the song for my mom. And I made her cry. And then, <laughs> and then ever since then, man, I've been like just writing music. And also, man, it goes deeper than that, though. Because in school, bro, I was bullied by like 90% of my school. Right? So, so I would write oh, wow. like, aggressive, like I would write my feelings and what I would go through. You know what I mean? And it was a dark place. So like the music, I mean, it came from like a darker time. Right. right? Did so, any of this stuff make it to your album? Um, I think some themes did. But in terms of the raps that I was writing at that time, nah. Because by the time I started recording my album... I was a lot better. I was in a better place and I was in a positive place and I wanted to inspire the world. So when I made the album, it was like, I want to make positive music. I want yeah. to change like the music industry and make it a positive place rather than put out more like negative. You know what I mean? Yeah. What what, you, what years was this when you were performing in that later? Yeah, state? so that was probably was like 20, like from 2010 to 2015. Something like that, okay. like my teen years. That, you know, that's okay. Yeah. Your teen years. You know, that's uh, um, that's awesome because I, I know, like, you like you know, there's there's a lot of people that do, that do one or two of the thing, you know, of the whether it's acting yeah. or or um, and to do all of them yeah. and and you know, it sounded it sound like I mean, you don't you don't just go and perform places. You you know what I'm saying, like. You got you, uh, it's hard to get booked anywhere, really, mm-hmm. no matter. So, uh, right now, do you still do the music or are you just now just focusing on uh, the acting? Because I know, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was go just ahead. gonna say, man, yeah, no, I'm I'm focused on my acting, but I have like I want to put out singles and put out music again and perform again because I, I miss being on stage. That was like the funnest feeling when you're performing and people are like you're giving love and then they're giving the love right back. And it's just, it's an energy that I miss. Um, and being creative, man. Like when I performed, yeah. bro, I wasn't just like rapping. I wasn't just doing the song. Like I would come up with stuff. Like I would jump out of a box and like, I had like, I would be a robot and I had this robot intro and like, it was different. You know, I did this Michael Jackson intro. I did this, like I had a gold jacket and, a tie with my name on it. Like I was just trying to be innovative and it was just about being different, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like, if you like Will yeah. Smith has like a YouTube now and even he started making yeah. music again because he just, he got the itch. Yeah. He's like, I miss you, man. I miss performing. You know, he would even really right. up and DJ right. I seen that. that was dope. Uh, that was really dope. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I know you mentioned Will Smith. I want to ask you because I, I, I don't know if you said one of his, What's your what's your favorite Will Smith uh, performance? Ooh, performance in terms of what acting or music? Yeah, acting, acting. Because mm. I no, that's mm. I just man. you know, it's a lot. A lot of I, I'm always curious about some of influences, one, and I I ask <laughs> or whatever, like top from um, whatever, or just. I mean, you just gotta so. In Fresh Prince, of course, we all know like the dad scene was epic yeah you know i think that's what yeah. opened people's eyes yeah. like this guy can yeah. act yeah. you know but then when he do when he started to do movies he did independence day and people started saying wow this guy could be in a movie you know what i mean like yeah. um in terms of performance man it's really hard to pick one i think like <sighs> pursuit of happiness maybe okay I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know, man. I love them at all. That's a hard question. That's why, yeah. Even Hancock. Yeah, even though Hancock wasn't sure. the greatest yeah. of films. Like, he was funny. <laughs> the, 
That was fun. I movie. am legend. Yeah. That's another one. Yeah. Seven pounds, like, yeah. Uh, seven, seven pounds. pounds. I don't know if you guys seven have pounds. seen Seven Pounds. Uh, what, what's that other one with the football? Um, oh, concussion. Uh, where he yeah. concussion. He did really good, yeah. There, man. Yeah. That's uh, do you, is so for you, um, like you know, for me personally, when I when I'm when I'm about to uh, when I'm about to yeah. perform, one of the things I do is I I put on my my headphones and I listen to some Deftones or some cumbia, whatever. What do you do to prepare? Do you get jittery before you you're about to perform, or uh, or what? what um, like as far as acting, because I know you. Uh, sometimes I mean, for me, the times that I've done it, I get super nervous right before yeah. I know cameras are going to be mm-hmm. rolling. And I don't want to waste anyone's time, so I just feel you know that that pressure. No, nah, I don't really get jittery on set anymore. I feel like I kind of eased okay. into it where it's just part of it's just, it's a job now, you know. But it's not like right. a a job okay. I hate. It's like I love it. You know, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited because by the time you're yeah. on set, I feel okay. like I feel comfortable yeah, because right. I did the work to be ready for that moment. You know, when you when you're and, and I used to feel scared, like, oh, did I do it good enough? Or like, I could do it again. What do you need me to do? But when you do so much work and prep, you know that you're ready and you you live in that character. And even if they throw like things for you to improv or different things you feel comfortable because you're already that character you know what i mean yeah i see what you're um, saying and one thing that really jumped out of me working with you on set is just you always keep everybody's spirits up no matter yeah. like how long the shoot has been going on you always got energy you're always joking around with people you're always keeping the energy up even if it's like a 12-hour <laughs> shoot and we've yeah. been there since two in the morning and it's two in the afternoon and yeah. people are falling asleep yeah. on chairs and couches and corners still keep that energy up and you're still just like yeah. this beacon of positivity that just makes it fun to work with you and be around you and be on set with you and it makes everybody oh, else want to work I appreciate that man I appreciate it so, um, I think it's important because yeah. at the end of the day we're all a team we're trying to make the best product possible and so if I could do my part and not just perform well on my part because that's necessary but if I can make everybody have a good time and everybody wants to be there and they want to do their best, I feel like it's that's just the 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 vibe and the the environment that I want to be in. Because if my energy's up and everybody's energy is is up, I do my best then too. You know what I mean? It's just definitely it's love. You know? yeah. yeah, and then like you said, it's it's having fun. And yeah. It does a big difference when you're having fun. Yeah, yeah. and it's different too because no, you know you're doing so, an emotional scene. Then yeah, I probably wouldn't be like cracking all those jokes. You know what I mean? <laughs> At least right before right, you it. take the after that face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. But, uh, pretty much. Where are you at now? Like, are you? Are you? I, don't, I was gonna ask you. Are you from the Bay Area? You, I don't know if you. Oh man, yeah, you yeah. I'm in the. Mention. I'm in the Bay Where? Area. I live in San Jose. Okay. Please don't track me down okay. if you're listening. But um, <laughs> but I'm making a move. I'm making a move to LA. Uh, my goal okay. is to move next year, because right now I am working on all my projects. You know, I'm. I want to finish my 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 film. I have other projects lined up. I have like music videos and other things that I want to finish so that when I go to LA, I won't be empty handed and I have a plan that uh, I'll execute when I move. Cause I don't want to go there and just have no plan and be like, Oh, I can make it. And then like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I can make it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, it'd just be another, another statistic out there. And that's another (laughs) thing too about this quarantine that I've been doing like heavy. I finished a book. It was a great book. Um, it was self management for actors. Um, okay. And I've been um, just watching videos, educating myself about Twitch, about YouTube, about brand building. And I think it's a great time if you're not going to put content out. It's a great time for you to learn about your brand that you're building, or learn how to put the content out. You know. Any what I mean? tips on brand building? Sure. Oh, tips. Yeah. Um, it's funny. So I was watching this video the other day because I'm trying to figure out my brand too. You know what I mean? Like a lot of my music, a lot of my stuff out there has been me when I was younger. So what is my new brand? And I thought about my goal. And my goal is to be uh, the first bankable Filipino lead male in Hollywood. 
right? Because it's never been done. We've never had one before. Right. Like we've had yeah, people yeah. who've had names. We had Dante Bosco. And in respect to everybody who's, you know, pushed the craft there. You know what I mean? But we've never had a Will Smith. We've never had a Tom Cruise that's not like a, a martial artist. You know, because we had the Jackie Chans, we had the Bruce right. Lees, and they were legends. Mm -hmm. And no knock to what they've done. They've, they're great. They're, they're, you know what I mean? They're, they're legendary. So that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying we never had like an Asian who wasn't a martial artist, who was just using their charm to be a lead male and known all over the world. At least in my opinion. That's you true. You know what I mean? Like, no, yeah, that's true. Because they usually have to have, like you said, a martial art angle. Yeah. Or, or they're the side you know, character. Like, like the you know? The side character, yeah. Yeah. The crazy guy well, I, or the nerdy guy yeah. or the shy guy. And yeah. that's another the thing. The villain. The villain. The villain. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of the shy character, though, bro. And, and no knock again to shy. Yeah. But, like, mm. yeah. that's why I want to come at it and, and represent a new face and, and show people that Asians can be confident and charming and funny and sexy in a way that you've never seen before. So that's my goal. Um, that's good. That's awesome, so, man. That's, nah. that's, uh, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's, that's a super that's important a, a goal to have, goal. you know, because I remember I was talking with, yeah, I was talking with Joaquin because sure. we were talking about, yeah. you know, just diversity in comic books, for example. And I, years ago, I had seen this list where it was like, okay. oh, the top 50 African-American superheroes. And they had to include like Blank Man okay. and Meteor Man just to get up to 50. And when you think about it, it's like, you know, in comic yeah. books, there's not a lot of diversity there. It's like, okay, well, how many, how many, you know, Hispanic superheroes mm -hmm. can you think yeah. of? Well, I can think of five on the yeah. Flash. I can think of Blue Beetle. Ooh. After oh, that, it's going to be a yeah, struggle. How many Beetle. Filipino yeah, superheroes yeah. are there? Ooh, yeah. that's, yeah, Jaime Reyes. And then you think about, like, well, how many yeah, Filipino yeah. superheroes yeah. are there? And it's yeah. like, ooh, yeah, no, that's, I can't that's even the head scratcher. And so there definitely <laughs> needs to be more. I can't think of any right now, and I have an encyclopedia of superheroes on both sides of the pond. Okay, <laughs> all right. Was it? Was it? Was it? Yeah. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, a Filipino uh, superhero. Well, yeah, we can well, count him. We can count him. Yeah. Yeah. No, he he did play that hero though. I forgot. He's a superhero. He was, my yeah. Captain Philippines? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to be racist. <laughs> no, no, no. It was it, it was okay. like what Pac-Man? Yeah, but Pac-Man, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But it's just I I I yeah. think it's just like super important to have that representation so people out there can have somebody up there right. that they can relate to. Like, oh, he looks like me, he's just right. like me. I gotta inspire them to be better. You know, there's 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 more to Filipinos yeah. than yeah. just and, you know, and, and it's, it's crazy and too Jolly because it's like you know? As a hero, you know, I want to represent confidence. Because if you right. look at, like, a lot of uh, stereotypes, mm -hmm. they paint us to be the shy guy most of the time or the awkward yeah. guy most of the time, right? The, the office nerd. Yeah, yeah. And it's like yeah. we've never had, like, a confident hero type. Right. And I'm tired of that, man. And then yeah. and because of that, a lot of Asians, the way they yeah. even act, like I see actors or, like, I see people in general, they don't feel comfortable being confident because all they see is like Asians who aren't. So they program themselves to be like that because that's how it's supposed to be. So I feel like what you're saying about representation is super important because once I'm out there and I'm representing that, I feel like more people will feel comfortable being confident yeah. and, and knowing that being loud is not a bad yeah. thing. Yeah. People look down that's, on you it. You know, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Because I mean, even when it reminds me of uh, this interview I watched. One of my favorite movies is La Bamba. Uh, I don't know what you, what favorite with movies? La Bamba. Is what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. La Bamba. Yeah. Bamba, Ernie Ray yeah. Jr. Right. I think. No, no, La Bamba. That wasn't Ernie. I'm tripping. It was Lou Diamond Phillips, no? Oh, I'm tripping. My bad. I mean Phillips my bad, and uh, my bad, my bad. yeah, Lou Diamond Phillips. Lou, 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 Lou Diamond Phillips and uh, Sahib Morales. That's He's a Puerto Rican actor. And there's fault. something he said. Yeah, my bad. No, no, no. It's, a, it's something he said because uh, this this is what I think 19, 1987, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, uh, Saeed Morales, a uh, Puerto Rican actor, heard a role to play. Uh, um, I forgot what it was in a Steven Spielberg movie, but then he also got offered the role of Al Morales in. Uh, in mm. Mm -hmm. uh, when he saw just... 
like a Latino music. Uh, are we losing Jados? Are we losing Jados? He was just spice. We were just either the villain or gangbangers. And yeah. that was the first ever film where it was an actual serious. And, you know, of course it had some negative elements, but it was, mm-hmm. it wasn't portraying them in a bad way. Yeah. And yeah. and he had offered he had he had been offered something along the lines of, of what he just mentioned in the Steven Spielberg movie, yeah. and he got offered that role. And he saw that the character's name was Morales, yeah. the same as his last name, and he just went for that instead. Yeah. And um, because like like you said, he. Just... Hello, I think we're cutting out. My bad. Oh, he is okay. He, he's cutting out. He's cutting in and out. He needs to hop on the Wi-Fi or something. Okay. Yeah, no, you're still there. Um, I feel that though. Out. I mean, but yeah, no, right. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that you've given us some insight on 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 what a Filipino, how a Filipino looks at Hollywood. Because I'm, um, I'm actually writing a script, and um, one of my characters. So it's about you know these nerds. They go to they go to um, they go to this anime convention, and one of the characters is actually very confident. And one of the things I wanted to do with the movie was kind of. Uh, you know, turn stereotypes upside down, and so yeah. this confident character, I I have considered making him uh Filipino or or some kind of Asian. And so I'm glad, I'm glad to hear your 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 insight on it. You definitely yeah. make a, a good case for why I yeah. should make him Filipino sure, or man. or or an Asian. Yeah, 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 and and join that train, you know, because if you're one of the first and you do it, you blow up real quick. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, because one thing, one thing I do is, you know, in all the things I do, I try and I cast Joaquin. He's mm-hmm. usually my lead. You know, he's an he's an African American dude, but I never yeah. cast him because of that. I cast him because he's right. a good actor. I mean, like the color I think about, and so like I I, yeah. I would love for other people to have that same mindset mm-hmm. where they don't like, oh, we need a Filipino this, we need a, a Hispanic that, where they can just cast. The, yeah. the right person for the for the job, the best actor. Yeah, I and feel the color that. Is, oh, Sorry about that. I just got knocked you know? off. But it's we're not quite good. there. Yet. Well, we so, finished your point for you. <laughs> it's hard. It, indeed. It's hard. <laughs> let me let me throw these these <laughs> three films out at you, uh, JD, sure. real quick, because we were just talking about representation, okay. and I think, and in my opinion, I think it's it's definitely a sign. These three films are a sign that Hollywood is opening to. Uh, diversifying okay. the lead role position okay. for the Asian male actor that isn't just you know, kung fu artist okay. or the shy guy. Yeah. And here are my three films. Right. I've only I've seen two out of the three. Okay. All right, first one is the the farewell. Right? Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with that one? Uh, that sounds so familiar. I think I've seen it, but uh, remind me what the synopsis is. Uh, the synopsis is there is a grandmother oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in China. It. Yeah, I remember that one. There you go, that one. Second one, Crazy Rich Asians. That's the one I haven't okay, seen. That's the one I have seen. But it was one definitely too. Not my And then third, um, and this isn't this this is not an American made okay. film, but the fact that it won the Parasite. Oscars this past yeah. round. You know, Parasite, yeah. yeah. Um I I adored Parasite and I also adored um The Farewell. I thought it was Unique. Yeah. I thought both films were unique. I thought this was culturally I thought that Parasite was a great uh, uh, satire on um, the you know the, the the upper and lower class struggle. I it was both. But I don't know. What, what, do, what do you feel about it? You know, when you watch these movies, do you feel like, oh, okay, there's there's hope in there. I can see a, a, a future for myself as an Asian American actor, quote unquote, uh, I guess specific American actor. Let me get that right because you're Filipino. You're not. The Asian name, right. but how do you feel when you but saw I'm, a, that I'm still Asian, include me. No, so, <laughs> um, I felt like I think these movies are the first of Asian representation, and I think that it's starting to get to where we'll be getting those lead roles, but I don't quite think it's there yet. But it's showing the promise of it. Right. So like with these films and, and I respect these films and what they've done, you know, because uh, it's an it's an amazing feat just to be to win an Oscar, you know what I mean? Or to do the numbers that they've done and just for us to even be talking about these films, 
You know what I mean? Like that's that's an amazing feat. Uh, as for me as an actor, if you're acting asking me yeah. specifically, um, mm-hmm. there wasn't quite uh, a character that I saw myself playing in these films. Um, but I think that's just specifically for my branding and the way that I want to project myself as an actor. Um, cause I still feel like there are like, they kind of, in terms of character, uh, not all the films, but like crazy rich Asians is an example. Um, I feel like that moved us forward as Asians, but I thought it was a movie that empowered us. Uh, and it was for us Asians. You know what I mean? At least for me. I don't know. We can disagree. You know what I mean? And that's that's the beautiful thing about like film. Yeah. Like we'll all have different opinions. No, I but I feel like I want to make a, a a movie that yeah. like, and... anyone and everyone can walk in there and feel like they can relate to the film without saying, hey, Asian pride. This is just a good movie. And guess what? The lead is an Asian. And guess what? This Asian can relate to him because he looks like him. But so can this white kid and so can this black kid and so can anybody and everybody. Because this is just a good freaking just, story. It just it, it be yeah. normalized that you see. Yeah, you know, like we're here. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't have to yeah. address that we're Asian. We're just people. Yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. Cool. Yeah. Let me throw this it's, at it's, you. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like how... All right, so rumor has it, and I can't think of the name of the actor, but that there's an, potentially going to be an Asian actor cast as Namor. Ooh. Ooh. What do you think about that possibility? I got really excited. I was like, rumor? ooh, because I, I know they're doing the Kung Fu. Yeah. That's, that's a rumor. I can't remember the name of the actor, but they, they were yeah. supposedly, mm-hmm. there, was a, there was a particular, there's an Asian actor that they were naming. I can't think of the name. But but I was like more so than than like the Shang Chi movie they've got yeah. coming out. I'm, I really think that would be a step in the right direction for because Namor. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of Namor in the comic yeah. book, but he looks kind of Asian the way they draw him. I gotta, you know? I gotta see now, man. Um, I gotta, I gotta like look at that. You know what? I see it. I can like low I've always. Seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, like, I, when I was growing up, you know, I grew yeah. up in yeah, the yeah, 90s, yeah. and, and we had Lois Park. and Clark, the new adventures of Superman. <laughs> yeah, Dean Cain is half Japanese, so we had we had an Asian Superman. So I'm I'm definitely all for it. Like, one of the things I was going to say is, like, you know, we've all kind of heard how, like, Hollywood will sometimes, like, stereotype things. Like, oh, this is a black film. Like, yeah. Tyler Perry movies all be classified yeah. as, oh, these are black films because there's a predominant black cast. Yeah. But then you have Jordan Peele who makes a film mm-hmm. called Us, and even though it's got a problem yeah. with black cast, nobody's calling that a black right. film. People are just judging based off its own yeah. merit. So I definitely think we're making steps in the right direction. We got a long go, but I agree with what you were saying. Mm-hmm. I, I would love for things to be judged on their yeah. own merit, not necessarily they, by yeah. political correctness. And it, but it shows or, that people are open for it right now. Yeah, I mean, like it would be nice to they let not the hybrid, not just the hybrids in, but let all, <laughs> let us all in, you know. Because yeah, yeah. it's like those hybrids, they break down the doors like Keanu right. Reeves, you know. Right, and, right, right. It's it, which is dope, but yeah, yeah. No, I, like I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, type, I'm typecast for I'm typecast as an extra for Cholo films, and yeah. I gotta, I, I gotta, I do, I, you know, I'll take what I get. You know? yeah, like, I hear you. Bro. I hear well, you. well, here's here's how here's how bad it, the the situation is. It's like, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a nerd, and even mm-hmm. I got a, a role as a Cholo. You know. Yeah. But you know what? Dang, I bro. appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate it because not only did they 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 that uh, 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 consult, which was mm-hmm. but I just yeah, I just feel like uh, that's not me. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. like I want <laughs> yeah, but also like 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 yeah. So I can't it just because whatever you know, but it, I, as a as a yeah. Yeah, in the work yeah. for that. Yeah, but see, that's Asians can actually. That's a lot just, of. It, it, yeah. It's normal. Yeah, an Asian film. Yeah, it's hard for us when we're breaking down the door, but yeah, because yeah. yeah, because there's like whole generations of people who think, oh, all I can yeah. ever be is a is a gangbang. Man, dude, all they've seen TV people show. in movies. Oh, my bad. You know, I cut you off. Like them. You know, and so uh, I was watching this TV show, and a phenomenal, no, no, no. phenomenal Filipino actor. 
Um, I don't want to put anybody on blast. So, but uh, when I watched this show, he was playing like the thug and he was being like interviewed by the cops, right? And I was like, dude, like, yeah, we all we get is the, the gangster or like the roles that the doctor roles or the roles that are down to the white character. And, and no knock against the like, I'm not trying to be racist, white people, I don't have anything against anybody. But the roles that we were getting were like the, you know, the one liners, two liners, and we're the here spice. for you. <laughs> the spice, basically. The little spice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but movies again, and even like movies that, movies like Black Panther yeah. are movies that are helping us. Bulldozers, as well. I call them. <laughs> no, I think just minorities in general. Yeah. Like people yeah. that Black, Black Panther was a movie that was like, okay, the world is ready for, for diversity. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's, they made a billion that's dollars. Amazing. So. A billion dollars. Yeah. And this all came from a question about Brandy, money. which all I still so haven't given any advice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's something I'd like to, to know more about. Um, where I was going at with the branding, don't mean to bring it back. We could bring it back to the whole superheroes and uh, Asians and all that, too, if you want. Uh, but real quick, I'm going to jump back to the branding. Is... Uh, <laughs> My advice for the video that I saw was just answer one simple question if you're trying to figure out your brand. And it's, what problem do you solve? And I thought that was, like, the coolest thing. And I was like, what problem do I solve? Like, my goal is to be this, you know, Asian actor, this bankable Filipino lead male. But what is the problem that I solve? When people watch my films and when people um, experience me or hear me talk, what is that problem that I can solve for them? And I was thinking about it, and the one word, because you're supposed to answer it with one word based on the video, was fear. And I, I was like, yeah, fear. I want to be the solution to fear. I want to represent confidence and courage. And people who watch me are inspired to tackle on fear and not be afraid of anything, not have any insecurity, not have any anxiety, and just do what they want to do, believe in their dreams with all of their heart and go for it and not hold back. You know what I'm saying? So that's like if you're struggling with branding, I recommend like really diving deep. What is the problem that you solve? And then you figure out what your brand is saying to the world and figure out how to sell that to your market, you know. That's a beautiful. That's a beautiful thing, man. Cheers to that. Thank you yeah. for thank you for joining us, man. That's uh, that's yeah. Um, I never thought. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, charisma. Yeah, so, uh, uh, where can people find you? Like, where? What's your social media? Sure thing. Uh, my my website is jdcharisma.com. Just my name. And uh, if you want to find me on Instagram, it's JD Charisma. Facebook, JD Charisma. My YouTube channel, JD Charisma. If you want to check me out on Twitch, which I stream every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, um, it's Charisma underscore gold. So those are my uh, social medias. Make sure you guys check okay. me out, follow me, connect, stay in touch. Real quick, and... what does the JD stand for? Okay, so JD doesn't actually stand for anything. It's my real first name. Both oh, caps, okay. no dots. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it means Joseph David. Joseph David. God. Yeah. And so people who are familiar with like biblical terms, and I'm trying, I'm not trying to get like religious, but yeah, yeah. Um, the story of Joseph and David are my dad's. Those are my dad's favorite like people in the Bible. Oh and wow! Okay. It, it represents like Joseph is a dreamer. And David is a warrior slash king. And that's what he wanted me to be, is to dream and to fight like a warrior and to be a king. So that's awesome. I'm JD Charisma. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, man. You're really, up. Yeah. Up. Oh, yeah. I appreciate no, it, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I, just, didn't I tell you guys he was cool after? Just spitting out poetry without really, it seems very effortlessly, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I appreciate it, man. It's been a pleasure talking to you, man. <laughs> thank you. This was fun, man. I, I can't believe the time went by so fast. I was like, yeah, thank you so much. Hour. I want to talk more. Like, let's do it. Hey, hey, <laughs> bro, we could if you want, if you if you have the time, brother. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, we. I mean, we yeah, can definitely have you back I'm on down. at some point, especially yeah, with down. your stuff. Sure. And I'll bring. Out. You know what? You come on and next promote one, I'll bring my uh, director friend Uma. Oh man, dude! I wish I talked about the movie that we made last year. Because it talks about the Asian thing. Oh, yeah. Can I talk about it real quick? Yeah, yeah, cool? yeah. No, no. Go ahead. Oh. I'm just going to blast her out real quick. Um, oh, yeah, so go ahead. We did this movie called Best Man. And it talks about Asian representation in Hollywood. It's perfect for the subject. I didn't think of it during the interview. Um, but I play my best friend's uh, best man. Right? And he's Caucasian. And so the day of the wedding, I'm like practicing in front of the mirror. Like, okay. Practicing my speech. And then my friend comes in. He's like, hey, bro. Uh. And he doesn't look good. I'm like, hey, bro, what's wrong, man? You okay? He's like, yeah, just can you sit down for a second? I'm like, sure, what's up? And he's like, yeah, we're just, we're going to go with a different best man today. And I'm like, oh, wow. what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, we just, you know, we want to go with someone a little bit more relatable, you know, someone that people could relate to. Like, well, what, what, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you know, just my wife is Asian, you're Asian. We just don't want people thinking this is an Asian wedding. You know what I mean? Wait, what? No, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, wow. it's just it's this it's a funny satire on like Asian representation uh, in Hollywood, but it's told through the perspective of this wedding, and so it's this it's a funny comedy, super fun. We just <laughs> went to um, probably the last film festival of the year due to COVID, um, but it was in Oregon, uh, disorient. Asian uh, film fest, and so it's called Best Man. What's the, what's, yeah. the, what's the film called? Best Man. Okay, yeah, I think I, yeah, yeah, I remember you talking about that when yeah. we did that. It was uh, an that amazing music video film, last man. Year. It was hilarious. We uh, yeah. Really proud of it. All the people who watched it at uh, Disorient really loved it too. But we'll see where it goes because after COVID, uh, we plan on going back into like the film festival tour. So. Stay in touch. We'll see any, where it any, goes. Any, huh? any screenings in the Bay Area? <laughs> I mean, at this point, no. <laughs> but <laughs> what? No, when? No, no, no. When? When? Just, when this? You know, uh, like everything this is sure. any, any plan? Okay, yeah. Okay. We, we have we submitted right, so many film festivals, so it'll definitely screen in the Bay Area. Um, and then be on the lookout again. Charisma Gold. We're working on that film right now. Uh. And we have a lot of things coming, so just stay in touch, man. I appreciate you guys again for having hey, me man, on here, man. Hey, man, we'd love to have you back, man. Yeah, I'm down. Hey, anytime you got any. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Ever, yeah. Yeah. the voice party, man. This was a blast. Man, we're, 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 you know, we're recording uh, once a week now. <laughs> oh, sweet, absolutely, bro. And yeah. then maybe we can talk about superheroes next time, because I'm yeah. doing oh, yeah, that yeah, too, yeah. man. <laughs> hey, you know what? Next time. Next time you come Hell back, you. I, I want you to go ahead and create Hell a you. Filipino superhero. We'll talk about him next time. All right, for sure. Man, I got you already, bro. I got you. <laughs> All right, okay. Next time. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. All right, man. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for tuning in. All right, peace. Go ahead, Phil. All right, thank you, JD. All right, this is the voice party, everybody. Thank you for listening. We are out.